Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. As the title says above, this is going to be a reading vlog. I'm hoping to complete this book today, if not by Monday. But I'm excited. You guys already can tell from the title above. But this is going to be a reading vlog for Until the Mountains Fall by Connie Lynn Cassette, which is actually book three in the Cities of Refuge series that she has started. Book one and two I read and love gave both five stars. Book one is A Light on the Hill. And book two is Shelter of the Most High. I love both of these equally. And book three is going to be released on July 2nd. That is when I'm hoping to have this up. So if I do have this up on the release date, happy release date to Connie Lynn Cassette for Until the Mountains Fall. So I did get um, an e-arc copy of this book. And I've been holding off because we do... Um, okay, first of all, I'm a part of her launch team for this book, which I am so grateful for. I love her writing. But um, they haven't sent the physical copies yet. They just got them. So we probably won't get them for another week or two. Pro I'll probably have it like a few days before the release date. But I really wanted to get this reading block up for you guys on the release date. So, yeah, I'm going to be doing it on the e arc. The e arc was sent through NetGalley. Um, and NetGalley sends their arcs through either um, a PDF file that you have to use in Adobe One Digital. I think that was what it's called. What is it called? Digital Edition, sorry. Or they send it through Amazon Kindle. So I have to read it on Kindle, and I didn't want to read it on Kindle only because I, you guys know me, I like annotating, I like writing my books, I like marking them up. Sorry, I'm just going to plug my laptop in real quick. And if you guys hear the beeping, I apologize. I reset my smoke detector, but you guys know the story with the smoke detector in the living room, so I apologize. But, um, yes. So you guys know how I feel. Um, I love marking my books up tagging them, flagging them, annotating the whole nine, but I can't really do that with ebooks. Now, um, I do have a color key for my Kindle when I'm annotating, um, just for highlighting purposes and for review purposes, but you guys know I love my physical books. But, um, so yeah, it is Saturday, June 22nd, if you guys can see this here. It is currently 12.55. Um, the plan is to try to get this, through this whole book today since it's an ebook i read ebooks really really fast um paperbacks takes about two to three days but ebooks i can literally read those within a day um i don't have much going on i might sound weird because when i'm sick um i stressed myself out into getting sick um two my throat is still sore because i burned my throat drinking coffee if you guys saw the what was it the book review I did on the Rose books of Bible charts, maps, and timelines. I, You guys know that I burnt my throat, so that still hurts. Um, and then three, I just got a cleaning at the dentist. And you know, when they do cleanings, they act like you're not supposed to be in pain when they're like pushing and poking at your gums. So yeah, my entire, like all of my gums, all of my teeth really hurt because the lady who did my cleaning today was really, really rough. Like, really rough. She didn't even care and shit. <laughs> Yeah, she was rough. So, um, I'm in the low pain, and I'm also currently eating my lunch. Um, I'm trying to eat. It's hard to really chew. It's really hard to talk. But I wanted to get this video out. I took a little bit of medicine, um, some pain med, just to help with the, um, the, the pain that I'm feeling. But, um, yeah, and I have some ginger ale here. But, yeah, so, like I said, if any of you are interested about my wallpaper, because I'm pretty sure somebody's going to ask me, because I do get asked to do a what's on my phone kind of video, which I'm definitely going to do that soon. But um, I actually just changed, and it just went up, I just changed my wallpaper to this pretty one. And um, this wallpaper is based off of the On Bended Knee Bible Study, which I'm going to be talking about it, but I do own the Bible Study. I literally just purchased two Bible Studies, you guys. Um, so it's based off of this Bible study on Bended Knee, and then I have another one for, um, Unexplainable Jesus. I'm going to talk about these Bible studies in an upcoming video because a lot of you guys want to see all of my Moody Publishers, um, Bible studies. I normally get their Bible studies for free, but I did purchase these two off of Amazon, um, because I just, I really wanted them and I didn't want to wait for the copies to be available for review. So I just purchased them. I think they're like less than $10, they're less than $10 on Amazon. But, um, yeah, that was my wallpaper. But, so, I'm going to open up the Kindle app on my phone, and, um, here are all of my, like, reading-ish apps. So, I'm opening up the Kindle app, and, like I said, it is an ARC copy, so, 
here is what it looks like until the mountains fall this is an arc an arc stands for an um advanced reader copy so most of the times it's an uncorrected proof so there might be gram grammatical errors um there might be misspellings and things like that so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go on goodreads and mark this as a book that i'm currently reading so let's do that right now i'm going to you guys can't see me but i'm on my computer doing that now and um i'm not gonna lie i did start this like a few days ago i got two percent of the way in and like my feelings and emotions just was like Ugh. and then i stopped reading it because when i first recorded this video it, it was insane with how loud i was so yeah <laughs> um i am just going to mark this as currently reading i'm gonna mark it as an arc because i did have an e arc of it and i'm gonna mark it as biblical fiction and a physical copy because my physical copy is coming on the way so we now have that marked on my goodreads account i mark it on my daughter of increase goodreads and my personal goodreads um a lot of you guys are not interested in like regular fictional books because i do read a lot of regular fiction romance and stuff like that so i do have two separate goodreads accounts one that's specifically for christian based things and then my overall one which includes christian and, and like non-christian things so right now i have until the mountains fall in the screw tape letters which i'm still reading <laughs> but um marked so i'm excited because this still follows the storyline of mariah's family with her kids and um it's it's really sad so i'm gonna read what it says it says recently widowed rivka flees kadesh refusing to submit to the torah law and marry her husband's brother malachi has secretly loved rivka i think that's how you say her name rivka for years but after her disappearance he throws himself into the war against the canaanites and is forced to confront not only his wounds but also hers including the shocking truth that has kept her from returning so we have that and um i'm just gonna record myself reading like i said i have my color key because there's really not much you can do on um kindle you only have these four colors so anything i mark as yellow is like key key plot points um anything i mark in pink are things that i love or like romance stuff anything i mark in orange is funny and then anything i mark in blue are like the memorable quotes that i want to share so we are in to it i am going to read this hope you guys see i'm gonna read this you guys are gonna see me read this i'm gonna eat like i said i'm hoping to finish this today we'll see how that goes so i'm just gonna start and um speed it up you guys will see my emotions you you, you guys know how to do these reading vlogs um these reading vlogs are a lot more in depth so if you guys don't want to know what's really going on in this book don't watch because i'm going to be in depth i'm going to be talking about what's going on in the book so yeah um this will be mainly a spoily spoily spoilery review so yeah starting off Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, I'm so, I'm excited to start back in. But, um, okay, so it starts off with Proverbs 27 and 9. And the NIV translation, it says, Perfume and incense brings joy to the heart, and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. That's cute. Then, on the next page, it has Deuteronomy 25 and 5 in the ESV, which says, If brothers dwell together, and one of them dies and has no son, the wife of the dead man shall not be married outside the family to a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go into her and take her as a wife and perform the duties of a husband's brother to her. And um, I know that's one of the, the old Torah laws. Basically, um, if you were a wife and your husband died and, his, and your husband had a brother, you would have to marry that brother, have a kid so that that kid could still carry on the lineage of your first husband and then have other kids with, yeah, their laws were crazy, but okay um so part one chapter one okay let's dive into this book and i am now going to speed up the camera So let me just bring this up a bit. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is basically where I was 
last time I tried to start, 2% of the way in. And so far, we're starting off with Rivka. She's basically, she just mourned her husband's death, and she now has to marry her husband's younger brother. And we have Mariah, and if you don't know who Mariah is, she is, like, the best, the best character ever. She is the main character of the series, I feel. Um, but Mariah... She has she has a bunch of kids, um, a bunch, thank God. Um, and, and to understand what I mean by that, you would have to read, um, what is it? Oh God, a light on the hill to fully understand what I mean by that. But Mariah is entering. Well, first of all, her two daughters are helping Rivka get ready for her wedding betrothal. I don't know what it's called, but um, they're doing her hair, and they're the three of them are just you know really contemplating and thinking, and the emotions are settling in because. Glidel, Gildel, Glidel, I don't even know how to say his name, how you say it, Gidal, Gidal, I think that's how you say it, Gidal, he's died, and, um, I believe Chana was the, I think Chana's the youngest daughter of Mariah's, and she's emotional, but Mariah came in, and she's just thanking, um, Rivka for marrying the next brother to carry on the line of Gidel, and, um, she's very bitter. Rivka is very, very bitter. And she has her reasons. Um, they talk about her reasonings about being bitter. Her father just irritates the mess out of me. Her father reminds me of the Pharisees, who's very much about showing how holy he is and how, um, how much he obeys the laws. So I think her father is a high priest or something like that. He's a priest. Um, but, yeah, I don't like that about her father. Um, so, so far, it's just like, ugh, gut me. Then they talk about her mother, which is so sad. And, you know, just the pain that she feels. Okay, I'm just gonna read it. She said, um, if only my own mother were here to hold my hand and whisper reassurances as I marched toward the destiny chosen for me. Instead, Yahweh had ripped her from my life, leaving me with nothing more than the faint memory of her face. Older siblings who were entirely wrapped up in their own lives. And a father whose priestly duties took precedence over everything. I just, <laughs> it's making me so sad, so sad, so sad, so, I have to actually mark, I'm going to mark that in blue, because I feel like I could use that as a quote, so, yeah. take a minute because i'm only three percent of the way through and i'm loving rivka so far she's very sassy um her remarks are just hilarious which is why you keep seeing me laugh <coughs> she's basically reminiscing on her relationship with Goodell, and um she actually married Goodell four months before she's getting ready to be betrothed to uh, malachi and malachi and Goodell have always kind of messed with her when she was younger more so malachi because Gidel, even though he was um involved in it he would also save her from malachi she is two years older than malachi though so i don't really know uh yeah but i mean it, it is sad that she literally was only married to her husband for four months before he died so i'm interested in knowing more about that but um yeah, she was like, uh, I had the distinct 
distinctive sense that I was marrying a boy, not a man. She came for him. She came for Malachi on that point. And then her sister, her older sister, was saying, um, Smile, you look as though you're headed to your execution, not your betrothal. And she said, Are they not one and the same? Rivka is hilarious to me. I I have a feeling she's going to make me feel so many emotions throughout the story. Malachi seems like a flirt. Um, because something just happened when she was walking down to him. So he definitely seems like a flirt. I'm really interested to know more about him as a person. Because I know as a kid, I did enjoy him in the other two books. Well, the other, when the, in the second book. Because um, the first book was all about Mariah and Derek. And then the second book was about Mariah and um, Derek and their kids. So... I'm excited to see what has changed with Malachi, and I feel like I should go back to the sequel and see if I could spot some more information about Malachi. I'm hoping to see other characters from the first two books in this book, just because it's just, yeah, we need, we need, we need. But, um, so far, I, I dislike her father. Like, I truly dislike him. He's annoying. But let me get back to reading. Okay, so I just finished chapter one. I'm, I'm, I literally just read like two lines of chapter two and got excited because I see Ethan. I think that's how you say it. I always call him Aton or Etienne. I don't know if it's Etienne or Ethan. Ethan, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce his name to this day still. But I saw mention of his name and he was like the main character in book two. So... I'm a little ex I'm I'm overly excited just just a little bit um <coughs> and if you guys see me eating weirdly like I told you my teeth hurt my gums hurt so I have to like mush it and then swallow it because if I chew it it's gonna cause me some pain so yeah <sighs> but my excitement you guys okay I'm gonna read Malachi's chapter. Okay, you guys, so I'm kind of swooning right now because, one, I'm loving Malachi. He's sweet, but he's... How can I say it? He has this deep... I'm going to say love for Rivka. But he's very childish in his emotions, is what I'm getting right now from what I just read. Um, and I just got really excited because they mentioned Sophie. I think it's Sophia. Sophia? Um, and Sophia and Et Etienne. I'm going to say Etienne. Oh my god, Etienne, Etan, I don't, I don't know. I always say Etienne, but um, they're the two main characters from the sequel, which was um, A Shelter of the Most High, um, Shelter of the Most High, rather, and, uh, you know, the two of them were so cute, and they were, I think they were married at the end of that book, or engaged, I don't remember, I think they got married or engaged at the end of that book, so to see them together again in the beginning of this just, it warms my heart because it just, it allows everything to flow seamlessly like from book one to book three you can see how it all flows together and also the lineage of Mariah's children just flowing together so <sighs> my heart is just it's happy <coughs> but yeah and I have it sitting on my desk on top of my little um, phone stand because I want to eat my food so yeah So now they got four kids, Etienne and Sophia. I'm happy. You know what? Let me. I have to read the last of this. Oh, I need to know. Oh yeah, cause see, book th book two ended with with talking about Malachi. Oh.
Yep, it talked about Rivka and Malachi and how Rivka was being chased by Malachi. Oh my god. Okay, so yeah. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, Mariah has six children. Etienne Gadel was the second. Um, Malachi, who is the third son. And then she has Abra, Chana, and Terza. So, I don't want to read that blog. I just... Yes, yes, okay. Okay, some of you guys heard that. I'm not my, 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 my family's home. But yeah, so at the end of book two, um, Etienne and Sophia were engaged or betrothed or whatever the case is. And now they have four kids. And it's just like <gasps> swooning over this. <sighs> okay, I'm going to try not to swoon as much because this will be a super long reading blog if I swoon way too much. So yeah, back to reading. chapter eight now and so far it's been crazy um Rivka has ran away um at the end of chapter seven she decided she was going to dip <laughs> um so she ran away oh so good so creamy and so like sweet you guys should know this is the um lavender vanilla honey lavender vanilla honey no it's a uh, lavender vanilla coffee with the sweet cream creamer from cold stones so darn good with five packets of sugar 
so good and then i have some cinnamon rolls <laughs> which i know is very different like not smart to have since i just gotta clean in but whatever but yeah she decided to say deuces and ran away with nessa nessa is a girl she randomly met on the tide line um but yeah i will say i'm loving malachi malachi really does have love for um Rivka, but Rivka is just so blind and stupid and annoying and she looks at him as a boy i mean granted two years apart i think he's like 14 or 13 i think she's six wait it, i don't even know how old she is but they're two years apart whatever um so i don't know she just looks at him like a little boy and it irritates me because you can see how much he tries to um, apologize for the past like he was a kid I mean kids are kids you know boys they like girls they bully them it, I mean it's not good but you know that's just normal it's, it's, it's kind of normal you know and she's just like holding it against him and what I think it is I think she secretly has feelings for him but she doesn't want to let those feelings come to the surface i really do believe that because she ran away only with the things that she got from goodell as well as um there was a a, a, a writing scribe but i don't even know what it's called but it was like this thing that malachi made for her when he was younger so the fact that you ran away with something that malachi made you and you were reminiscent on that and then she was really being petty. I mean, cooking disgusting food and messing up his clothes when she was washing it. Petty. Petty to the max. But um, she started to admire his strength and how he still, you know, stood with her. Because he was, she was trying to make him run away. But it just made him suck it up and just choose her. Like, you can tell Malachi really loves her. So, I'm really loving that. But she, like, straight up dipped with this, this, this chick. It's just like, girl... And the thing about it is, it's not like she, like her father's even telling her that Malachi is not marrying her because of his duty um, to the Leveret laws or the Torah. He's doing it because there is an actual like love for her that her father notices, which kind of makes me like her father a bit because he actually doesn't notice that Malachi is in love with her. Um, but what I'm gonna need, what, what I'm gonna need to happen is for her to stop playing and admit her feelings. That's number one two for malachi to stop being real childish and to say his feelings and three for the two of them to just stop playing games they're, they're playing games right now that's what that is because there was a little kissy scene it made my heart happy for like a second and then she was like no and it backfired and it made me and it made me mad so i'm on chapter eight and um i can't believe she did run away from home like 18 percent of the way through I'm not sure how many chapters are in this book. And I'm, I'm trying to read this slowly because, like, I don't want to finish it. But the goal is to try to finish this today. So I have me some coffee. I'm probably going to get on my bed and lounge for a bit. So good. And it's not as hot, so it's not burning my throat. I made sure I paid attention to how hot I was making it. <laughs> but yeah what I'm gonna do is stretch out on this bed get some more reading done and snack while I'm doing that okay so I'm on my bed right now um, I put the camera up so I'm not flashing you guys or anything like that um, I have on my blanket my favorite blanket it has like a little pumpkin this is gray pumpkin on it I love this blanket so much um, I got this blanket from Rite Aid. Um, Rite Aid has like their seasonal sales. I always try to snag up some of their blankets just because their blankets are so fuzzy. And um, they're kind of like the quality of Walmart blankets, just cheaper. Really. Hope you guys don't hear that drilling downstairs. <laughs> but um, I'm going to get back to reading this book because it's really, really good. Like I said, I'm on chapter 8. Chapter 8. Yeah, I'm going to sorry if I'm flashing you guys sit and read and um let's bring the camera down a bit Ooh. 
Try not to flash. <laughs> you guys, I have on clothes. I have on this dress, but, um, you know. Alright. <sighs> Meeting done. I'm probably gonna sit my phone here. Does that work? We're gonna make it work, but... Yeah. Ugh. Again, sorry about flashing. Eee. <laughs> this is probably gonna be another weird reading vlog. behind um they made it to lissa or whatever the damn lisha lissa i don't know what this, this stupid city name is but um apparently that's where like a bunch of people go different nations and religions and all that um and there they worship ashrata ashrata she's one of the concerts of bale bale i think that's how you say his name and um right now she's watching one of their ceremonies and she said she was always interested in learning about their ceremonies but she saw that they were pretty much innocent so um she said what I, I marked it she said and while i had no interest in turning from yahweh i could not help but be curious and i marked that in blue as a memorable quote because a lot of the times many of us say that um we say that we're interested in things like we don't want to turn from god and we know some things are sinful but we're we're curious about them but that curiosity is what kills you and what can put you back in bondage or trap you let me move my computer up so it doesn't fall but yeah i thought that was like crazy but she watched them um kill some pigs and now she finally lias i think the name is laish 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 i'm gonna say laish because it's spelled l-a-i-s-h the city that they're at but um she's caught up in all of that but now she's realizing that they are banging each other <laughs> is what i'm gonna say they're have they're doing sexual acts with each other in front of her and now she's shook it's just like sweetie if your people tell you it, 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 i don't know it just blows my mind because a lot of the times people will tell us things and we'll just be like well whatever it's not really all that crazy that like you're saying but then when you see it in person it's just like well damn so yeah um they went from singing to Killing pigs. To having sex with each other. In front of her. And she's bugged out right now. So. Yeah. <gasps> no. No, 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 no. Okay. Prediction. I am on on twenty on twenty one percent of the way through slow chapter eight prediction right now. So Nessa, who is from Kadesh, um, and if you don't know, Kadesh is a city of refuge, um, where manslayers were told to live and live out the rest of their lives until the priest that put them in there died. Um, but so she, right now Rivka isn't feeling well because she is witnessing all of this stuff going on the. Um, sacrifices, the sexual interactions going on. She's not feeling good. Um, so Nessa tells, is telling her to go to the other side where the canopies are to get some fresh air. And I'm hoping nothing bad happens, but I feel like something bad is going to happen. Maybe even to the point of rape. 
and I'm hoping that's not what's going to happen because that is going to crush me. Um, oh my god. So now she's questioning herself, what had I gotten myself into? And you know what? Though this is a story, um, for me, I feel like we do this a lot when God tells us not to do something or to do something we don't prefer to do. We try to run away. And when we run away, we just put ourselves in worse situations, even though it looks pretty. Kind of like when you're married and you want to check out the, see if the grass is greener on the other side when you know it's not kind of situation. Um, it really just puts things into like perspective for me. Because I know like if God, God told me to do things for a while... And I'm just like, I don't want to do it. And I'll run away from doing those things. And it's just like, you're not doing anything but making it worse for yourself in the long run. So, hmm. Alright, I'm going to get back. If she, fingers crossed she doesn't get raped. I'm like, fingers crossed because I can't do. No! Okay, so right now she's talking to this guy. I think he was a Hebrew as well. Yeah, he seems to be a Hebrew as well, but one of those Hebrews that fell away from the ways of God. And he's like a, a little demon right now to me. He's like telling her that, you know, it's okay. There's beauty in... He said there's beauty in some of the things they do. Meaning some of the things that um, the Canaanites, the Sidonians and stuff are doing, the Egyptians are doing right now. Um, and granted, you can find beauty in everything, but that's a trick of the enemy as well. It's just like you're trying to entice her into finding the beautiful parts of the wrong that's being done. You know, and I, I just think it's crazy that he's doing this, like... Oh my god. <gasps> no! <sighs> so this man just gave her something to drink. just gave her his cup first of all shorty <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm really getting upset with her right now because Rivka is doing stupid stuff like I'm really hoping she doesn't get raped but I feel like that's where it's leading to because this man is just like there's nobody next to her to protect her you know and that's something Malachi and her father and even Derek and Etienne could have been doing but you you left said the man handed me his own cup encouraging me to drink rubbing a comforting circle on my back first of all it ain't water it's wine why are you connie connie lynn cassette is tearing my heart right now you guys i have to mark this as an important part because it's crazy No. This man is pissing me off, guys. He's like, and she tried to give the cup back, and he's like, no, it's yours now. Like, oh. 
I'm doubly pleased that you are a fellow Israelite. Bruh. Step back. Then he gonna ask somebody to bring some more wine. Shorty about to have... Oh my god. This is like giving me the vibes of a serious rapist that's trying to get a little girl to have sex with him. That's that's what this scene is reminding me of. And it's just like, it's crazy how things like this happened back in the day and how real it is for our time. It's just like, it says his calm demeanor and familiar cadence of his um, voice encouraged me to relax the raging panic that had threatened to choke me earlier fading further into the background and how she felt comfortable to answer him it's just like yo and she's still sipping his dang wine i took another sip and hummed in pleasure as the liquid left a warm trail down my throat so then she's asking <laughs> sorry if you guys hear that like i said the the, the sounds um my landlord is downstairs they're drilling and then the kids are downstairs as well playing on the instruments if you guys hear that but um <coughs> i have to sit up okay you have to sit up for this because this, this this is making me mad like oh my god okay let's fix this camera this way so then she's like oh it tastes good i never tasted something like that it's delicious it makes my tongue tingle bruh and you're still drinking it and then now this man is laughing at her. I feel like she's getting ready to get raped. Oh my gosh. I don't I don't know how to deal with this guy. It's like I might cry. I'm in my feelings right now. You don't understand guys. Like cuz I don't Okay, let me let me just read. Let me just read. So, what I predicted happened. And now I'm on chapter 11 with Malachi. And apparently it's been 4 days that she's been gone and um <coughs> breaks my heart. Makes me want to cry. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back um when I get to chapter twenty because. Let me let me sip my coffee because I'm like I'm. St I I still can't. I'm really bugging out right now with how this happened. Like, I feel so bad for her. I really do. So bad. So I'm gonna pause and um, read the chapter 20 and come back with my thoughts. <sighs> I thought I was gonna take a break till chapter 20, but guys, yo, chapter 12 just blew my mind. So they just mentioned a character from the first book who is the brother of Derek who is Mariah's um husband and Raviv is a blood avenger he swore to um blood vengeance on Mariah and Etienne about 20 it says about 20 years before which was in back in um a light on the hill and shelter of the most high and um there was a reason for that that took place in A Light on the Hill, which was so sad why he was becoming a blood avenger. But 
apparently this chick Nessa is his daughter so now he's banging on Derek's door asking where Nessa is because like I mentioned Nessa okay Nessa is the girl that um Rivka Rivka met at um when she was working doing the ties and that's the girl who she ran away with so mm. Yeah, oh my gosh, this this just got crazy. And I've always hated Raviv. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce his name. I've always hated him. Like, I hated him, but I just disliked him as a character because he was really just gunning to kill Mariah, and I didn't like that. Um, I get the whole Blood Avenger thing, but his reasoning behind wanting to kill her when she was completely innocent... Mm. <laughs> When Nessa and Rivka left, they left with Nessa's cousins. Um, what are their names? Yoash and Kefa. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I'm terrible at these Hebrew names. But um, apparently, the wine that they were serving at this event was spiked. Um, they said it was spiked with, or laced with poppy. So, yeah. This is all being told to Ravi, Derek, Malachi, Mariah. Like, the cousins are now telling everyone what happened when they took the girls to Laish. Or Laish, or what have you put it. <sighs> oh my god, this is... I, I have to commend Connie. Her writing, flawless. The way it seamlessly flows from book one to book three, flawless. Her characters are all amazing. All have their own personality all are individuals within themselves like you know which characters are which no two characters are alike no two characters act alike sound alike talk alike even the, the twins and the siblings like they don't act alike which is insane that she takes these things from the bible and creates such phenomenal stories and this is why i wish i had my physical copy which i know is on the way so i'm just gonna have to settle for the e-arc but I'm just blown away. Like I'm not even fifty percent of the way through. I'm just like, wow. This is funny. Um, we have Derek who's talking to Raviv, his brother, telling him, "I didn't even consider knocking on your door, Raviv. Who would have guessed the two girls would flee together or even suspected that they knew each other?" Because, like I said, there's a lot of relational issues with Raviv and Derek that took place in book one and that went on into book two so now to see them two come back together in book three but over missing girls um it's crazy like and I honestly didn't even consider Nessa's father being Raviv which is Malachi's uncle like I I never would have guessed that um just because Raviv's it, like I said, it was a lot. He's a blood avenger. If you guys don't know what a blood avenger is, basically, if someone was to kill... Okay, for example, say um, I'm married, right? And if some... Not not even married. Let's take that back. Say... I'm trying to figure out a, a scenario. So say I'm out with my brother um, and I accidentally get murdered. Like, because you know, back in the day, they cleaned with rocks and stuff. So say someone's throwing a rock, playing around, and we're walking past, and I accidentally get hit in the head, and I die. Even though it's an accident, my brother then has the right to avenge me by killing that person. Now, that person can run to a city of refuge. There were six of them, and Kadesh is one of them. So they could run to a city of refuge and seek refuge, um... And be protected from that blood avenger, but then they would have to spend the rest of their lives inside of that um, that city. You know, I'm going to do a whole video on the Cities of Refuge and Blood Avengers because after reading her first, first book, it really sparked an interest in me learning about them. And I think I want to do a sermon on the Cities of Refuge. Like, yeah, but I just I've never would have guessed it would have been Raviv of all people. And I'm hoping I say his his name right. It's R A V I V, Raviv, Raviv. 
I'm gonna say Rabi. Like I said, I'm terrible at pronouncing these names. I really, I'm, I'm gonna post because, like I said, I'm part of a live stream, so I'm gonna post in her, um, her Facebook group that I would love a video with her pronouncing these names because I never can say them right. Like I got Mariah, I got Derek, I got Malachi, but Etienne, Etan, I don't know if it's Ethan. Etienne or Aton. I was saying Aton before, but I believe it's Etienne. Um, Sophia or Sophia. I don't. I don't know. Rivka, Rivka, because it's spelled R I V K A H. Rivka. I don't know. But yeah, I'm blown. That. <sighs> okay. Back, back, as you guys can see, I marked it in yellow because I'm like, <sighs> okay, okay. So I just read chapter twelve. 13. <laughs> I just read chapter 13, which was Malachi's. Um, 12 and 13, I think, was his. And it has now been... It skipped from four days in chapter 12 to chapter 13 being five years since Rivka had ran away. <coughs> and, um... It's crazy. So, I guess after she ran away, he put hit, threw himself into war... And um, he hurt his arm and his eye. So now he considers himself useless. Um, his sisters and family are trying to marry him off, but he doesn't want anybody else. <coughs> his twin sister, Abra. Hope I'm saying her name right. Um, she's very snippy. She's also with child, and I think she's married. Chana also has a guy that she's talking to. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. And then at the end of his chapter, we find out that Joshua has died. And now I'm in chapter 14, where we are getting information from Rivka now. Um, and it starts off with her being surprised that Joshua is dead. So, <coughs> sorry, I think I need to take one of those, um, hauls right now, but. I'm just, I'm, I'm mind blown, you know? You go from running away to rape to then being gone four days to not coming back for five years to now Joshua being dead. But Malachi also has a messed up arm and an eye that's messed up. Connie knows how to get you into your feelings and your emotions and she knows how to get you invested in characters. Um, for the long haul. Like, I always love her characters. I have been in love with Mariah since A Light on the Hill. And I, I love Mariah so much that I bought the first series. Which is, um, Out from Egypt. Which I need to actually read on. So I'm actually going to read for the first book in the first series after I'm done with this. But yeah. You guys can see. This is chapter 14. I am 30% of the way through. Like I said, I'm taking my time absorbing it because I know I could definitely finish this by what time is it? It's 3.13 right now. I could definitely finish this book by 5 o'clock, but I'm taking my time. So yeah, hopefully this will be a one day reading vlog, two days, but then I got church tomorrow so I might not even read. <laughs> and if I do read, it'll be in the car and I won't be able to record because my car, the car be like mad loud since we always listen to music on the way to the different services we go to. So yeah, maybe a two, three day vlog. But, I'm just, I'm, in, I'm invested. I don't even want to do anything else right now. I'm supposed to be editing videos. I don't feel like doing that. Because this is getting really good. Like, start to pick up. But, yeah. Right now, Rivka is in Israel. She's in Golan, Israel. I'm not sure what that is. Um, You know what? What I'm going to do is grab my Rose Book of Bible Charts and Maps. Hold on. Okay, so I went to go get this, which I literally just did a video on not too long ago, if you guys want to see this. But, um, I'm going to go to page 171 and see if I can find that location. This this is how I do when I read books, you guys. Keep that in mind. This is literally what I do when I'm reading books. So it's in Israel. So let's see. Not here.
not on this map. Yeah, I'm not seeing it on any of these right now. I'm looking, but... Yeah, it's not on any of these maps, which is fine. But, um, that's what I normally do. I flip through the book to see if I can find it. But, yeah. So, I'm gonna get back to reading. Alright, so. Golan is a city of refuge, which is why I couldn't find it on the map. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a different city of refuge that she sought refuge in. And, um, she is selling all types of different idols and fabrics that... Technically, the people of God should not be touching and selling and using, but yeah. <sighs> Golan is very different from Kadesh, in which they do a lot of um, marketplace selling. Whereas Kadesh is more of a small town where people are very loving and stuff to each other. Um, the Levites and stuff, they're basically twisting what Golan is supposed to be, apparently. So, yeah. Back to reading. Okay, so, I don't even know what chapter this is. I think 19 or 20, but right now they're talking about the tribe of Don. <clears throat> and again, I'm in my Rose Book, chart, Rose Book of Charts. Um, so, Don... I just want to look up some information on them. Found it. So here it is. Um, right now, basically, is saying that this is taking all the this stuff that's taking place after Joshua has died, and they're basically saying that the Don tribe is abandoning their inheritance and their land. <clears throat> oh, and um, Matthias, I think this. Um, I don't even know how you pronounce Rivka's father's name, but he received a letter from her which is awesome um also malachi has met a new girl who is chana's friend so yeah but i'm just gonna read a little bit about the dons um the don the tribe of don real quick so don basically means judge their symbol is the snake <coughs> um don was the fifth son of jacob born to rachel's handmaiden they had a small portion of land that included Joppa, which is Tel Aviv today. Um, they failed to conquer the Philistines in a land and migrated to the northernmost part of Canaan, which I'm guessing that's what they're talking about now as far as them um, abandoning their inheritance. Some notable stuff. Um... They didn't join in the battle. Samson was from this tribe. Samson was the judge. That's pretty cool. Um, King Jeroboam. Jeroboam or Jeroboam. I don't know how to pronounce it. But he built a pagan temple in Don. Amos includes Dan, Don in his list of idolaters. So. Basically the tribe of Don just is terrible. <laughs> okay. And as you can see, I mentioned this in the review that I did on this. This is why I always have this book out. Because this book here really helps me to further understand um, the different tribes and locations when they're mentioned. So I'm, I think I'm definitely going to get my hands on the other two volumes of this. Because I feel like they'll be useful for me in studying more. So back to this.
at chapter 30. Ooh. <coughs> I'm at chapter 30. I'm 68% of the way through chapter 30. Um, I think I'm going to finish this today. It's 420 right now. I'm hoping to finish this by 6. Um, it's getting good. So, what has happened so far? Malachi um, was sent by Amatai, who is Rivka, Rivka's father, to go get her. So, he went to Golan which is another city of refuge, to retrieve her. But in doing so, he found out that she was, one, indentured in service. I think she had about two years left. Um, under Samal, who is a part of... I forgot what tribe he's a part of, but he's a part of one of the 12 tribes. Um, he also finds out that Rivka was actually pregnant, and she didn't know she was pregnant until after she had gotten raped. Um, she was pregnant with Gidel's son who she named Amit, who was after her father. So, basically, if she and Malachi get together, Malachi does not have to give up their firstborn for Gadel because she now has a son for Gadel, if that makes sense. Like, Gadel has an heir. Um, so, Baz and um, Hakim went with him, but they went back to Kadesh. He stayed in Golan with her, and he's working on the house for her master. Um, I'm not feeling her master right now. I don't know much about him, but I do know that he's a major douchebag, and he likes to um, assert his authority. Um, things with Nessa are not good. She married a man that is very abusive and cheats on her, um, and Malachi is Malachi actually just finished telling. Um, Rivka that he'll help her because Nessa is his cousin and she didn't know that Nessa was the daughter of Raviv so yeah it's a little crazy it's it's crazy so yeah um Rivka and Gadel have a four-year-old son who looks exactly like Gadel and basically she's stuck in Golan due to her indenture contract she has two years left so I'm just, I'm like reeling, and then she's asking, she had asked Malachi why he never got married, and um, he explained to her why, and then he was like, I didn't deserve you, and then she talked about how he like tormented her as a kid, and he explained why he did it, so it wasn't that he just had a crush on her, but when her mother died, she was very much a gloomy child, so he said the only time he saw her look alive was when she would get mad and want to hit him. So that was his way of getting her to be her old self, was picking on her, which tears much, like, my heart. Right now, there is a guy that works as a bodyguard or something like that for Samal, who is her master. And he's pretty much, I want to say a different word, but I'm going to say a douchebag. He's a donkey's butt. Um, seriously, like, he's pissing me off, as well as Samel's wives. They're annoying. So, I feel like there's about to be, like, a turn where someone tells Samel about the two of them, Malachi and, um, Rivka, and some craziness ensues. I'm loving Amit, though. He is so stinking cute and adorable. I just, uh, want to squeeze his little cheeks. But, 68% of the way through, um, I've literally been lounging here. I have not eaten my other cinnamon roll. My coffee is cold. <laughs> my throat is, you guys can hear, um, my nose is stuffed up. So, yeah. I think I want to pop a, um, oh, that's what they were talking about. So weird, you guys. So, um, I'm looking at this in Hakim and, um, what's the thing? Malachi was saying they were from Naphtali and it's spelled with an F but I think this is what they were talking about was a tribe um, N-A-P-H-T-A-L-I but instead of P-H it had an F so yes now I see that um, so Naphtali okay. so Naphtali was the sixth son of Jacob and it means my struggle the symbol is a deer and um, they lived in the hill country of Galilee. Okay. But yeah, it's... <coughs> it's getting crazy. Um, I don't I don't know how to feel. Like, I don't want it to be over. Like I said, I'm 68% of the way through. And I'm like, 
I'm ready to cry because I want the two of them to be together, but there's like so much there's like this huge wall between them. Not even a wall, there's like a huge giant tree, like a freaking wall of trees. And it's like every time you chop the tree off, the tree grows taller, which then blocks the two of them from being together, and it's making me mad. It's making me so mad, like so, so mad. What I'm about to do is take a minute and watch um, Jenna's reading blog because she did do a reading blog um, on reading the arc of this book. And I just love Jenna's video. I talk about her quite often when I talk about biblical fiction. Um, Jenna Van Maurick here on YouTube. I will leave a link or you can click the eye on the screen to her reading blog. I haven't watched it yet. I really want to watch it. But I'm trying to wait until after I record my reading blog to then watch her reading blog and then comment on it and probably start a conversation. I don't know. But right now my feelings are just... I'm not liking this Est Esteban or Este Est Esten Bell. I don't know how to pronounce the stupid guy's name, but uh, he's annoying. It's like he knows that there's something between Malachi and Rivka, but he's like keeping it to himself. So I'm a little nervous. I like Anna though. I guess she's like the cook for the household. She's nice. She really treats Emmett well. So I'm just. I I have so many hopes and so many wants and desires and I'm 68% of the way through and I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm I'm not ready. Just not ready. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to continue reading until I'm about 80% of the way through. And then at 80%, I'm going to come back and discuss my thoughts. What I'm going to do right now is go heat my coffee up. Well, let me see. Because if it's cold, I'll probably just drink it cold. And uh, we'll see. Ooh. That lavender, oh, it hits me every time. It's not too bad. But, um, yeah, I do want to read this so that I can get back into screw tape letters because I've been slacking on that. So, yeah. I'm going to get back. Like I said, I'm on 30. Chapter 30. Hope you guys can see that 68%, right? Yeah, 68% of the way through. <sighs> Right now, I'm seeing this more so as a 4, 4.5 star rating. As much as I'm loving it, I have to see how it ends to really give my full rating. Right now, I'm at a 4, 4.5. I'm in between 4 and 4.5, four and not a 5. Just because I, after reading this, I still prefer Mariah's book, which is Light on the Hill. But then I also still love, of all her kids... I love Etienne, which was book two. So, I don't know. I'm loving, like I said, Malachi and Rivka and all the other characters. But you guys saw my excitement when I was reading about Mariah and Etienne and Sophia. So, you know, I'm leaning 4.5, 4-ish. We'll see how this ends. Depending on how this ends, it might be a 5. But, I, like I said, 4, 4.5 right now is how I'm feeling at 68%. So, um, we'll see how this ends. Again, obviously, this is going to be a happy ending. There is going to be some craziness that's probably going to ensue. But I'm going to read up until 80% and come back to you guys and let you guys know my thoughts. Because I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to finish this book today. I'm going to. And then I'm going to rape about it and gush about it on camera. And then write my review. And then boohoo and cry. And then just sit and wait for the physical copy to arrive. Hopefully it comes soon so that I can have the physical book before the release date. <laughs> But, um, look at that. My phone is on 5%. Do you guys see that? 5%. Let me plug my phone in. I was gonna stop and do some editing, but I just, I can't stop reading this book right now. I just, I just, I have to finish. Which is why I said by 6, I should be done. It is 4.30, basically 4.29 right now. And I'm going to finish this book in the next hour and a half. Because I need to. So, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna get back to this. Okay, 81% of the way through chapter 36, and um, Malachi just got the mess beat out of him. So, Baz had came back to, uh, they're not in Golan, they're in another town at uh, Etrian, Eldrin, I don't even know what it's called, but they're in some other town. And the Amarins, Am Amarins, I don't even know what they're called, but those people are basically marching toward where they are. There's basically a whole war brewing. Um, right now after Joshua has died 
But um, yeah, so Bass came and gave Malachi a bunch of jewels and gold coins and silver, I think silver coins, to give to Samel in order to retrieve um, Rivka and Amet to take them back to Kadesh. But um, um, Samel is basically a dog. Um, he took the jewels and stuff, but in taking them, he was only releasing Rivka and was telling Rivka he was going to keep her son because she had her son while she was enslaved. And though she was pregnant before she was enslaved, um, the elders wouldn't see it that way because she had her son during the time of her enslavement, if that makes sense. So he's basically trying to keep her son. Um, Esten Bell, whatever his name is, came to speak to Malachi and beat the mess out of him. And now we're at a scene where Baz has come back um, to talk to him. And I'm going to need Samel. Samel. I'm going to put the name of his, his name on the screen. I'm going to need him to just, just go somewhere. People are telling him to leave town. And he's like, I'm not leaving town. I'm going to just have to pay a tribute to Kushan. Kushan, K-U-S-H-A-N. I'm sure you guys seen that name in the um, the Bible. It's Kush, but they call him Kushans or something like that. But um, I'm a little, I'm a little hurt right now. I want to cry. But I feel like I'm gonna end up giving this a 4.5. It's not five star worthy for me compared to the last two books. Um, for me, it's just not five star um it's definitely 4.5 it you know 4.5 we'll see um might be a four but 80 percent through 21 20 percent left it's only 450 it's not even five o'clock yet so maybe i can finish this by 5 30 but i'm just i'm i'm reeling in my emotions right now um if I'm looking here, it's because I'm actually looking at the phone screen. If I'm looking here, I'm actually looking at the camera. So, yeah. If you guys hear any sound, it's because I have my heater on because I'm cold. I'm, I used to be anemic. I'm not anemic anymore, but for some reason, I still get cold really, really quick, even though I'm not anemic. So, yeah. Um. <coughs> oh, and I did get my nails done. <laughs> Thursday, I got them done. I don't like the shape because I normally... I don't know, I guess I've been getting the stiletto coffin ballerina style for, not stiletto, the coffin or ballerina style for so long that I just, I haven't gotten square nails done. And the guy I normally get my nails done, for some reason when it comes to my pinky and my middle finger, he's always on his phone so he gets busy. So I don't, I don't really like it. Not i like the color the color is called indian pink no italian pink my sister picked this color i was called italian pink and i'm loving it really gorgeous pink color but um i don't know tell me what you guys think what do you guys think of this, the nail shape like i don't know it's square but i don't like the way it looks like it is the length of my nail if you guys can see like my nails are that length or at least these two nails are the length of it I didn't want it too long because I know that they'll grow out. And I know I said I wasn't going to get them done. But the problem was that my nails, as you guys saw over the course of videos, have been these three. My thumb, my index, and my middle finger have been um, just breaking nonstop on all of them. This one isn't broken, that middle finger. But like this, this one broke off, that broke off, that broke off. This one has been breaking really, really bad. Like, I've had to clip it multiple times. It's just, it's really, really weak. Whereas, these three have been lasting. So, I just I just wanted to get it done because I just was not in the mood to do my own nails. So, I got it done in gel. I don't really care for the, the shape. I don't know. I guess because I haven't had square nails in such a long time. It's very weird to me. But what do you guys think? Like, does it look weird? I don't know. It looks weird to me whatever but yes i'm i'm what I'm, I'm just ready to see them go home together get married and start a family you know like they finally um malachi and rivka are finally at the point of understanding that they truly do love each other and truly do have feelings for each other but there's so much in the way um samel is just being a douchebag and not wanting to let her go then you have the Amarins or whatever. I'm going to put the name on the screen. Though Them people are like coming now for war. It's just, 
can we just get them home, get them married, and let them have babies? And see, now when they have the firstborn child, it won't be Goodell's, it'll be theirs. So, like, and everyone back in Kadesh knows that she has a kid now, you know? So they know that Goodell has a son named Amit, named after her father, which is amazing. Um, I am interested in seeing how Chana, Abra, and her sister treat her when she gets home because those three were like the harshest ones of everyone as far as when her with her leaving and, you know, being mean about it. Um, I was getting ready to say something else. Oh, and then she thought when she told um, Malachi that she was raped that he would leave her, but he said he already knew when he first went to... Um, Laish to get her because he heard what happened and he doesn't hold it against her um because obviously she did she was forced you know she was raped so it's not her fault so it's just uh, seeing the love between them is so like amazing and i wish they would have just you know said all this from the beginning when they were kids and we could have avoided all this crap because he's loved her since he was 14 i'm not sure how old he is right now but he's loved her that long so you know yeah so i'm gonna keep reading and hopefully this does not go bad because i don't want it to go bad i want it to go good i want them to be happy together and have more babies and have kids and just live happily ever after and i really just want to see mariah and etienne again. that that's that's all i care about so i'm gonna get back to chapter 36 <laughs> to cry right now because somebody just died and it, it and the crazy thing is like I was hoping for him to die since book one but now that it actually happened I, I'm crushed okay guys let me go to close my door all the way back hold on
Okay. So, uh, what chapter is this? 46? 43, sorry. <laughs> chapter 43, and she's back home with everyone, and her oldest sister, Layla, is, like, getting on my nerve. And right now, Layla is reminding me of the older brother from the story of the prodigal son. You know how the prodigal son ran away, came back home, the father welcomed him with open arms, but then the older son was upset because he was like, I was the one who was here doing everything. And, you know, th this, this is literally what this scene is reminding me of because she's like, why are we celebrating? Um, I'm, I'm going to read it. Hold on. I'm just trying to highlight it. So it's like, I simply do not understand why we are ce celebrating this way. Um, then her father said, and why not celebrate? After five years of waiting, do they not deserve to celebrate their marriage? Then the sister says, of course she does. Um, no, the sister didn't respond, so then the father said, of course she does. She is my daughter, Lila, your sister. So then Lila says, so are we to pretend that she did not run off and sell herself? Put her own child in peril. Who knows what else happened with her? And it's like her accusations you know struck and it's just like she just reminds me of the prodigal son's brother as well as how we as people tend to um put people in these boxes when they do things when they sin when they do things that are not aligned with what we believe she's very very harsh um but her apparently her sister has always been that way she has taken on the role of the mother when their mother dies so she hasn't really been like that older sister for um Rivka so yeah. Lila's just being an annoying sister. Like, oh, she's irritating me. So, 94% of the way through, almost done. So, I'm going to keep recording myself reading this so you guys can see my ending reactions. And then I'm going to come back with, I guess, my final thoughts. And it's only 5.15, so I'm finishing this way ahead of time. Like I said, I wanted to. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay. The, those last two paragraphs had nothing to do with Rivka or Malachi. It had to do with Mariah and um, Etienne. Uh, but what? Oh, Connie. Connie, 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 you... She took my heart, you guys. She, she took my heart. She ripped it out. 
she shredded it into pieces she sewed it back up again stuck it in and then gave me another heart attack like what <laughs> i'm not even gonna say what happened at the end um you guys have to read this if you've read the series so far please please get this book now i'm not gonna give this five stars um I'm not giving this book five stars by any means. It's not a five star read for me compared to the other two books. Um, I feel like if this was the first book in the series, then maybe it would have been a five star. But because I love the first two so much and they just gripped me more, I'm definitely... Uh, it's going to take me some time to get my thoughts together. I'm stuck between a four and a 4.5 right now. I'm leaning towards a 4.5, but I feel like it's a 4 star read. I'm really not sure what I'm going to give it. I'm going to spend like, okay, it's 523 right now. So I'm going to spend maybe till 6 o'clock pondering my thoughts. But holy heck. Um, what? First of all, I love Malachi and I love Rivka. I just, ah, so cute. They kind of remind me of like a real life relationship, how people get that second chance romance. That's what this reminds me of, a real life contemporary second chance romance story that ending uh, just oh my god um it took two books to get to this ending but it finally happened and i was hoping it would happen in the second book but it didn't happen in the second book it actually happened in the third book and like i said it's concerning etienne and mariah so i mean Aton, ethan I, whatever his name is it's concerning them too. So, and it's just like she just was like, bam, here you go, and ends the story. Like, what? Where, where? I need book four now. I think it's called In the Flame of the Night or something. I'll put a, a, a picture of book four's cover on the screen, but mind blown. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take 30 minutes to ponder my thoughts, get all of my thoughts together for a written review to figure out what I'm going to give this, but it's not a 5 star for me. Um, it's definitely a 4, 4.5. I'm probably going to give it that 4.5, but we'll see. I, uh, I'm mind blown. I love the writing of this. I love the way it flowed. Um, the characters were all great. It's just, I, I have more of a connection, I believe, with Mariah and, um, Eitan, Etienne, whatever his name is, however you pronounce it. I have more of a connection with them because I grew with, with them from the first two books. Malachi was in the second book, but he was, like, really, really young, as well as Rivka. They didn't really get a lot of, like, screenplay. I'm saying screenplay, but, like, role character playing. I don't know what the word is to say. But... That ending. I'm gonna just leave it at that. Okay, so my final thoughts for this. Um, this book is really, really great. I really loved it. Characters are awesome. The way that it flows from books one and two is amazing. I like how they take characters from book one and two and bring them into book three. The ending, whoosh. Um, is it a recommend? I definitely recommend it. Um, it's not a five-star read. I feel like following books one and two, it falls just a little bit for me. Um, but that's only because I wasn't able to get a strong connection. I feel like if Malachi had more scenes in the sequel, I would have been more connected to him because that's what that's why I fell in love with the sequel because um Aton, Etienne, however you pronounce his name, he had a lot of screen screen time. I'm saying screen time, but it's not a movie. He had a lot of character interactions in the first book, which made me love him in the second book. Whereas Malachi had a few character interactions in the second book, so I wasn't able to fully get a full, like, blown connection with him, though I still loved him. So that's why I'm gearing towards a 4, 4.5, but it's still a great read nonetheless to me. It's still an awesome book in the series, and there's one more book to go, and I don't want it to end, but this ending, now I see why there's only one more book left. <sighs> I'm not prepared, but... Overall, great read. Totally recommend it. I'll have a full-blown video review coming for you guys really soon of the entire series. Well, not the entire series. The three books of the four so far and um, everything like that. Do I recommend it? Yes. Um, snag it up. It is available now as of today, July 2nd. I read this book in one day. <sighs> links will be down below for Amazon, for ChristianBook.com, I think Barnes & Noble's Kobo. I'll find all the links as possible as I can. And I will also leave a link to my written review down below because I'm not sure what my thoughts are going to be in my written review. But, um, yeah, totally recommend it. Again, happy release day.
to Unto the Mountains Fall by Connie Lynn Cassette. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed this book. And I hope you guys enjoy this reading vlog. You guys finally get to see a reading vlog that takes place in one day. Sorry if you guys hear any music. My brother is out there rehearsing because he's going back on tour with 50 Cent soon. My brother, like I told you in previous other videos, my brothers are musicians. My older brother of the, of the three, young, like I have three younger brothers, but he's the oldest. He's been on tour with uh, a lot of people. He's done music for, I think, K. Michelle. He's done music for 50 Cent. He's been on tour with Mario and B2K and... um uh, Melanie, and, uh, oh my god, uh, what are these, I can't remember these people's names, but my brother's been a drummer for a lot of these people in MDs, so, yeah, um, he's rehearsing right now, so I'm gonna take some time, get my thoughts together, so I can write my written review, but that is gonna be it for this vlog. I know you guys enjoy these kind of videos of me talking through the, the, the books that I'm reading. Um, and then I also will, like I said, have a video review for you guys coming soon once I have my physical copy. Um, hopefully my physical copy, like I said, would have arrived by now. So that I can post that video review up during the same week that I post this video, if that makes sense. But, yes. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!